my channel. This is Shoni and you are watching Sapna and I let us stream together. In today's episode we are going to learn about the circulatory system and the digestive system. The circulatory system is the body's main food transport system. It carries vital resources to every living cell in our body. It also takes away the waste material that is produced by the cells. This system is made up of thousands of tubes called vessels. The vessels carry the blood throughout our body. The blood circulates our body endlessly. There are three types of blood vessels. The arteries, the capillaries and the veins. Each vessel is designed for specific functions. Let's start with the arteries blood vessels. The arteries blood vessels carry blood away from the heart. It has muscular walls that stretch as the blood passes through it. It then shrinks back to its normal size which then helps to push the blood through it. The arteries blood vessels then divide into finer and finer branches which then pass the blood to the capillary blood vessels. The capillary blood vessels are microscopic blood vessels. It is thin and also it has thin walls. Its thin walls allow oxygen and other nutrition to leave the blood vessel. It also allows waste material to enter the blood vessel. Later, the capillary blood vessels join together to form another type of blood vessel called the vein. The veins carry the waste material that is gotten into the capillary blood vessel to the heart. The veins have thinner walls than the muscular walls of the arteries. The heartbeat in the veins are very weak. So the veins use one-way valves to keep the waste material flowing to the heart to be removed out of the body. Some waste material could be very toxic and if we let them build up, it could poison us, so all the blood passes through the kidney, where it is cleaned and filtered. Now that we have learned about the different types of blood vessels, let's look deeper and learn about the blood. The blood is also a living tissue that contains about 20 trillion microscopic living cells that float around in plasma. The plasma mainly contains water but also contains other vital resources that our body needs in order to survive. The blood also carries away waste material. Did you know that an average adult has about 5 liters of blood? There are three different types of blood cells. The red blood cells, the white blood cells and the platelet blood cells. The majority of the blood cells are red blood cells which carry oxygen from the lungs and distribute it throughout our body. The second type of blood cell is the body soldiers that patrol and roam around the body to protect the body from infectious diseases and foreign invaders. This type of blood cell is called the white blood cell and is also known as leukocytes. The last type of blood cell is a platelet blood cell which helps to clot the blood when our skin is injured. First, when our skin is cut, chemical reactions make the plasma to form triangles of thread that trap the blood cells. The platelet blood cells arrive and changes its appearance by becoming spiky and later sticky to form clumps. This process helps to clot the blood. All the different types of blood cells are made in bone marrow which is a soft fat rich tissue found in hollow bones. Every split second, 2 million blood cells die and 2 million new ones are made. Now we are moving on to our digestive system. The parts of our body that digest food are part of the digestive system. Digestion starts from the mouth where it is physically digested. It is swallowed and is digested in the stomach and intestines. The undigested remains are removed by the body. Let's look deeper in how our, digest, our food is digested. First, the food enters our mouth where it is stirred and crushed apart. The six saliva glands in our mouth produce saliva. 
the tongue mixes the crushed food with saliva and then puts it in into the throat where it is swallowed. The saliva also helps to swallow the food easily. In the saliva, there are chemicals called enzymes, which break down the food chemically into its molecules. The food then travels from the throat to the stomach. Glands in the stomach emits acids and enzymes. The enzymes and acids work together to break the food down. The stomach doesn't absorb nutrition, but does absorb water and medicines such as aspirin. The stomach's elastic wall allow it to expand. The stomach's muscles mix the food until it turns into a thick liquid. A ring of muscles called the pyloric sphincter opens to allow the thick liquid to pass into the intestines. The stomach muscles contract to push the thick liquid into the pyloric sphincter. From the pyloric sphincter, it reaches the small intestine. The gallbladder emits a green liquid called bile. Bile neutralizes the stomach acid and also turns fat into droplets that are easy to digest. The pancreatic emits at least seven digestive enzymes. These enzymes break down carbohydrates, protein and fat molecules. These two organs are connected to the small intestine. The bile from the gallbladder and the enzymes from the pancreatic are added to the digesting food. In the small intestine are millions of like these finger-like growths called villi. The villi absorb the nutrition in the digested food and then passes these nutrition into the blood. The digested food in the small intestine travels to the large intestine. In the large intestine, there are bacteria who feed on it and multiply. The bacteria releases vitamins and nutrition and also emits a waste gas. Like the stomach, the large intestine also absorbs water, making the undigested remains more solid. The solid waste ends its journey at the anus, where it leaves the body as species. I hope you enjoyed learning with me about the circulatory system and the digestive system. For more informative videos, please stay tuned to my channel. Bye-bye.